Hi everyone, I uh, hope you're doing great. I hope you are not uh, too tired. Uh, I'm quite tired because, yeah, after launching and so on. Um, just a quick question, who is developing using PHP, Symfony and that kind of stack there? Okay, oh great, perfect. So for the one who don't uh, know Symfony, PHP and so on, you will learn some stuff. <laughs> A lot of stuff, maybe uh, too many stuff, but I will try to reduce uh, the uh, yeah the details. And for the ones who are using that kind of st uh, st stack, I hope you will learn uh, some stuff as well. So yeah, if you're here, it should be because you're interested in API platform, so you are at the right place. And me, I'm gonna talk um, about serialization, uh, which is uh, an important point uh, of API platform and uh, for APIs in, in general. So just before getting right into it, my name is Mathias Arlo. I'm a French developer, uh, French PHP developer at Letier, so please forgive me for that lovely or not accent uh, you decide. <laughs> uh, you can follow my work uh, on GitHub. I mainly contribute on Symfony, API platform, and that kind of stuff. And if at some point you want to reach me for whatever reason, you can contact me on, on, on my Twitter there. Okay. Some concept. So we're going to talk about seri serialization. So what is serialization? The serialization is the fact of representing data structures in a format that can be sent or persisted in order to be reconstructed later. OK, headache. Uh, this is a quite dense uh, definition, all right? So we're going to focus on the main point, the important points of that definition, so we can understand it better. So, okay, Repre representing data structure is the fact of uh, creating a construct construction pattern for uh, these complex structures, okay? So that uh, they, are, they can be reconstructed later. That reconstructed later part is the important part, you know? Um, it is mandatory that you uh, have to be able to reconstruct a uh, data structure later elsewhere and even using an other language than PHP. Okay? So, yeah, interoperability. Uh, you have to uh, serialize them in a format. So, yeah, this is a fact of um, yeah, putting the data, the complex structure, into a data stream. Okay? Um, and the data stream can be binary, which implies a speed and lightness and so on. And it can be textual as well as Symfony does, uh, so that it can be readable and editable. Okay, so that it could be sent or persisted. So yeah, with that data stream, that uh, inline data, you know, uh, yeah, you can put it in database or even send it uh, through an API. Um, and w this is what uh, an API platform is doing, right? More concept. <laughs> How does it work uh, in Symfony? So here is a schema that I've, I've pulled from the Symfony documentation uh, that explains how the serialization works within Symfony. As you can see there, the serialization is decomposed in two main parts, the normalization and the encoding. So the normalization part is the fact of turning complex data structure in a simple and flexible and standardized uh, data structure. In concrete words, in PHP words, it's basically turning an object into an array, a simple hash map, which is in PHP uh, a structure, uh, yeah, really simple and flexible. You can do what if whatever you want with that. Okay. Then comes the encoding part. So the encoding part is basically to take that uh, standardized structure, which acts at the as the interface between. The, 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 the data stream and the initial structure and to convert it uh, in a data stream. And that's it. About the serialization, of course, it's the exact opposite. We take the data stream, we decode it, so we transform it in a hash map, in an array, and then we convert the, the array into the complex uh, data structure. So if it's an object, we hydrate the object and so on and so on. So if we want to create APIs, um, most of the time, we're going to have to deal with both, with serialization, if we want to send and transmit our own uh, 
uh, resources version, but as well with decentralization uh, if uh, yeah, we want to receive clients' version of uh, resources to handle post, put, and, and batch, and so on. And API platform and Symfony will simplify a lot the job for us. Okay, so now that the serialization is clear for us, uh, let's take a little example. Let's say we are all Symfony uh, and API platform developers, and we are developing an API that handles Mars robots, okay? And robots are, from the API platform point of view, resources, okay? That's why we have only put the PHP 8 attribute uh, API resource on top of the robot class. And because API platform is magic, it's already done. Uh, we can now, uh, yeah, we, we can now call the API uh, right there, and uh, the application will return us a serialized version uh, of the uh, of the robot with the ID, the name, the mission, and the an official mission. So that's perfect. So yeah, perfect. But still, some questions remain. How can we configure? the serialization. I mean, how can I expose some fields in a certain context for a given request, for a given resource instance? Uh, and yeah, how can I do it, you know, depending on some stuff? And this is what we're going to see, OK? Uh, we're going to see a lot of stuff today. Um, yeah, a lot of way of doing today. Uh, some ways are more complex and some ways are less powerful. But the main point here is to yeah know that these methods exist and when to use them properly. So it's just so, uh, showcase, basically. So as you may have guessed, you are not supposed to know the unofficial mission of the robot, of course. For us, a robot has only one and one mission, the official one. So we want to basically exclude the unofficial mission during the serialization. Simple use case. A first way to do, uh, which is quite simple, is to leverage the in-your attribute of uh, the Symfony serializer. Okay, uh, as you may know, API platform is relying a lot on Symfony serializer, so they are sharing a lot of features and a lot of stuff. So that attribute is quite simple. It just permit to ignore a property during the serialization, and that's it. And that makes sense um, to act on properties, because if you remember the schema with the normalization and the encoding, uh, you know that a property and its value will become the key value pair of the normalized data, which is the base of the, uh, yeah, the final stream. So if the data is not in the normalized uh, array, it won't be shown in the stream. So that's how it works. Quite simple. It is also uh, possible to do it uh, using the API property. Uh, you've seen a lot uh, during this conference, but you can use it to do it, uh, to do it something like that as well. Uh, so yeah, you can use that uh, attribute and configure the readable force and the writable force um, of that attribute. In that way, you are doing the very same thing. Uh, than uh, using the API, uh, the in your PHP attribute. But you might be aware that uh, by doing that, you are ju just configuring the property exposition uh, in the eyes of API platform. Okay, so if you are not serializing uh, the robot into a s API platform context, uh, the unofficial mission will be uh, serialized. So prefer the, the previous solution, just to show you that it is possible. OK, so we have seen two simple and straightforward ways to expose a property. So that's great. But that's kind of binary, right? Uh, this is not depending any on any context. Uh, yeah, whatever the request, whatever the robot version, and so on, um, as it's strictly, strictly configuration, the property will either be ignored or exposed. But it happens sometimes that we want to expose some data uh, in a context and other data in another context. And with that, uh, it's just not possible. And hopefully, we have groups in Symfony. OK, when the serializer was firstly designed, um, 
it came directly with the possibility to provide some context in the serialization, to add some extra data. And this is why the dollar context uh, parameter st stands for there. And the dollar context parameter is only a simple array that can contain anything. So you can do anything you want with it. And uh, it is by leveraging that context that our colleague, uh, and you've seen, in seen, <laughs> seen him on stage, Kevin Douglas, uh, created serialization groups in the 2.7 version of the serializer of Symfony. And this is quite smart because it's a s flexible and simple way to expose properties. To use it, it's quite simple. You just have to bind a property to several groups. As an example here, I'm binding the name to the group, group 1 and group 2. And I'm binding the property mission to the group uh, 1. And the unofficial mission isn't bound to anything. And you can recognize kind of a masking system. We are creating a masking system there. And it will be clearer with the very next slide. Because then during the serialization, you can um, yeah, provide a list of groups in the context. Okay, So first use case group one, second use case group two. And during the serialization, the normalizer will iterate over each properties and look if the property is bound to a group that we have given in the context. So here, if I am uh, giving to uh, the group one in the context, the property name will be serialized because it is bound to the red group. Same for the mission and the unofficial mission won't be uh, yeah, serialized. So that gives the name and the mission uh, serialization. And the second example, you yeah you are able to understand it. So easy, uh, I think it's really, really nice. Okay, so we're gonna talk a, about a lot about groups, I'm sorry. And now we, are, we will talk about group, but within API platform. So for the sake of performances, you often, often want to um, expose some field in a list and other uh, for item, you know? It's a common use case. If you have ever uh, developed API, you might have um, had do so that kind of stuff. You know, you <laughs> you want to most of the time expose less data in a list than for a single item. Uh, let's say you are developing an API that is exposing uh, blog articles. Uh, you do not want to expose the full blog content in the collection of uh, of articles. So hopefully, API Platform allows us to configure serialization group directly depending on the operation done on the resource. Here is an example. Uh, if I uh, use the item operation, I will use in the normalization context the item group. And if I'm using the list group, the, sorry, the list operation, of course, I'm going to assign the list group. So that's great. Uh, that uh, tackle a lot of issues, right? But still, it's kind of restricted. Indeed, you cannot configure uh, groups depending on the current request and depending on the current resource instance, the content of the resource, okay? And another self is that it's a lot of configuration code. Here, it's a tiny example, but, but it could be it could become huge and it's kind of verbose. So you can introduce a lot of, yeah, of typos and so on. And uh, yeah, want to get rid of that code. So we're going to see how to, how to tackle these issues um, by attributing these groups dynamically. OK? But some concepts first. <laughs> Again, first, we might understand our API platform and Symfony are interacting. So here is an example, a simplified example, of how Symfony and e API platform interact during a request. Okay? So whenever doing a request, a controller generated by API platform will be called. And its job is just to return a single or multiple uh, instance of resources. 
Yet, and it's a, a basic of Symfony, if a Symfony controller does not return a response instance, okay, the response object, Symfony will dispatch a view event to find someone able to convert the controller, uh, yeah, the result to an actual response instance because Symfony only knows how to um, uh, how to send responses. And here is the um, yeah where the API platform magic happens because indeed API platform has a serialized listener which is listening that event, okay, and it will do the following. It will first call a context builder. I will detail it uh, later to build the context depending on the, the, the request, basically. And it will give that context and call a serializer, which, is ser which will sorry, serialize the controller result. And then it replaces the initial controller result with the serialized version of the controller result. This is how it is done internally in API platform. And then, and I won't cover it into in my talk, a response listener will uh, yeah, actually convert the serialized version of the resources into an actual response instance so that it could be returned by Symfony. So now that we are knowing that process, we're going to leverage either context builders and serializer in order to attribute group dynamically. Okay? So far, so good. So far, so good. Super. <laughs> okay, let's take a new example. We want to authorize secret services only to access to the unofficial mission of the robot. So the first thing to do is quite logical. It's to bind the unofficial mission to the, to the secret service group. And then we must adapt the serialization context depending on the identity of the user, who, which is who is making the, the, the request, right? So how we have seen earlier, uh, at some point a serialized listener will be called and it will call a context builder, uh, which have to create a context depending on the current request. And it's within that actual request that we will be able to discover the identity of the, of the user. So we're gonna do kind of decoration, we'll decorate the, the serializer context builder to extend its behavior and to handle our use cases. So let's do that really quickly. We, yeah, we don't want to see so much PHP code, so yeah, let's go fast. Uh, basically, we are, we are retrieving the API platform's native context builder uh, context, and if uh, we are dealing with a robot and the current user is belongs to secret services, we add group secret service. And then we return the context and it will be used by the serializer and job done. So as you may guess, exposing or not a property depending on the yeah the security on the access control, it's quite a common use case. But there is a lot of code and uh, we are lazy, we are developer. Hopefully uh, since API Platform 2.6, uh, there is a compact solution for it, which is the security parameter of the API property attribute. And what its job is, uh, is basically to expose or not a property uh, depending on the access control result. And because the access control result is based on uh, the expression language component of Symfony, you have access to the current user, to the current resource instance, to the current request, etc., etc. A lot of stuff. You can even leverage the voter system of Symfony, so it's really powerful. So we can take a step back and uh, have a look at uh, how much line of code we just got rid of. Actually, if, uh, if I inline it, it's just one line, so it's perfect. So it's handful, but keep in mind that if it's uh, if you have um, sorry, a really complex use case, you can still step back to context builder instead to do some complex stuff. Okay, so until now, we just have used the current request. You know, we just have uh, analyzed the current request. We never taken into account the current resource instance. 
Let's take a new example. We want to expose robot mental health to its creator only. And yeah, with the previous solution, it's impossible to tackle that issue. So we're going to use the second step, one step further, the serializer. And more precisely, the normalizers, of course. So let's recall the main process again, because it's great. Uh, the serialized listener will call the context builder to create a serialization context depending on the current request. And then it will give the context to the serializer, which will at some point call a normalizer. Therefore, the normalizer will have access to the data and to the context. And it's perfect to tackle the issue. Right. So create, let's create our own uh, normalizer. Uh, again, PHP code. Let's go quick. <laughs> Basically, the normalizer will just add the, um, the creator group on the context uh, if the current user is the current resource creator. And that's it. Uh, then it will call the regular API platform normalizer in order to, yeah, to normalize it, uh, basically. So this is really powerful. Here, we have just acted on the context, but, and on group on the context, but here we have access to the data. So if we wanted to, we could have modified, edited, or formatted the data. So keep in mind that, uh, yeah, normalizer are really, really powerful. Uh, maybe too much. But it's my point of view. Again, as you may guess, there is a simple solution for that. Uh, indeed, as the expression language is providing access, access to the current resource and to the current user, we could have just written that. Object.creator equal equal user done. So that's great. OK, sorry I go quick, we are late. <laughs> uh, until now, we. I've just worked with a single resource, but uh, I don't know any API with a single resource. If you have one, you are lucky uh, because, uh, yeah, quite simple. Uh, most of the time, we have multiple uh, resources. So how can we do? Here, we have a robot resource, and we have a datasheet resource. Uh, so we can naively write the following. So I have an item and a list operation with the read group, and same for the datasheet. Again, we are lazy, and it's kind of verbose, and still we are repeating ourselves for each operation and for each resource. So the first easy way to improve that is to move the normalization context directly into the resource, because it's the same between operations. OK, let's do that. So it's a little clearer, but we are still repeating ourselves uh, for each resources. And that's why we're going to use API platform default resource configuration. OK. So let's edit the API platform.yml file, uh, the configuration file, and set um, the groups under the normalization context key of the uh, default uh, section of API platform. And yeah, what is basically here will be applied by default on each resource is uh, if it's not overridden. So right now, we are able to write some naked uh, API uh, resources PHP attribute. So that's great. Um, and you must know that the default section doesn't work only for uh, normalization context, for group, and so on. You can uh, set defaults for a bunch of stuff, such as uh, access control, pagination, and so on. So it is cool, but it's adapted only for simple use cases. Um, it's quite limited, and it will cause issue when dealing with nested resources. And you yeah, most likely have uh, nested resources. So let's say that our robots are now holding data sheets. And we want to access only to the data sheet specific uh, uh, reference but not to its specification, because specifications contains a lot of data, OK? So when I yeah, fetch the robot, I just want the uh, 
the reference of the data sheet. With the current solution, it's either all or nothing. Uh, I will have here the whole data sheet with the specification. And if I pull out the group, uh, I won't have the data sheet and I won't have the ref reference. So it's not working with the current config. One simple solution could be to configure uh, a group but scoped to the resource itself. Okay? So for the robot, as an example, I could set the robot colon read. And for the data sheet, data sheet colon read, of course. And then on the reference property, I'm saying, okay, you are accessible if you're coming with the data sheet colon read group, but as well with the robot colon read group. By doing that, that's perfect. Um, because if I'm going through, if I'm coming through the robot, I will just have access to the reference of the data sheet. But if I'm coming uh, by the data sheet itself, uh, I will have access to the whole data sheet uh, data. So great, but uh, our default configuration just doesn't work anymore. Uh, we once again have to write by hand on every resources uh, the groups. And uh, I'm still lazy, so I don't want to do that. That's why we're going to have a look at uh, resource metadata. OK, resource metadata, it's a scary word, I can admit, but you will see it's quite simple. You can see a resource metadata uh, as a blueprint, OK, a blueprint of uh, how, yeah, used, yeah, it's a blueprint used to, to configure uh, all the operations and it interaction that you can have with a resource. In other words, resource metadata contain all of the information that you can have uh, on a resource, such as access control, pagination, documentation, normalization context, and so on and so on. And for example, the context builder will read that uh, resource metadata in order to uh, generate the initial uh, normalization context. Okay, so we have a resource metadata collection factory uh, and its, its, its role is to create a resource metadata based on a resource definition. So what is a resource definition? It's basically the API resource PHP 8 attribute. But you, if you are crazy, you can do it uh, using YML as well. Uh, you can do it uh, yeah, in several ways, even XML. Uh, and okay, so the resource metadata collection factory will, will read those files and create a resource metadata collection. Um, so yeah, what we can do actually is to decorate that very resource metadata collection factory in order to customize the um, normalization context and to apply groups dynamically, but depending on the resource itself and on the operation type. And that's uh, really great. As well, I won't enter into the detail, but here is what to keep in mind. Here, we are retrieving uh, the metadata generated by API platform. So by reading the API resource uh, stuff, the default stuff, and so on, the, the complex stuff that we don't want to do. But then, for each metadata, we're going to add groups uh, on uh, the operation. And as we have access to the, re uh, the resource type and the operation type, we are able to add dynamically uh, groups like robot colon read, robot colon list, uh, data sheet colon item, and so on and so on, dynamically. So it's really powerful. Um, keep in mind that you can use uh, any logic you want to assign any kind of groups you want, uh, using any convention uh, you define in your company you want. You know, you are really free. And moreover, um, here I'm just tweaking the normalization context, but as the resource metadata is holding anything, you can do yeah, really powerful stuff. You can configure access control dynamically. You can even add operations on the, f on the fly, you know, a slash lock, slash unlock, or so on. Uh, this could be uh, done uh, with few PHP lines and will be 
applied on any resources. So it's really powerful. OK, victory. Uh, I have, again, my naked API resource uh, PHP attribute, right? And uh, yeah, everything is working, basically. <laughs> Uh, but some of you might have noticed that we can achieve the very same thing using context builders. Okay, so why introduce a new complex concept, uh, resource metadata, uh, long name, complicated to say in English? Why just not using context builders? The answer is the documentation, the API documentation. You might remember, but context builders are only executed during a given request, during an actual request. Therefore, the documentation generator just do not know any context builder. They won't have any impact uh, yeah, to the final uh, documentation. So we can ask ourselves when to use context builders and when to use resource metadata factories. And the answer is quite straightforward. If, um, yeah, if your groups or your normalization context is depending on the detail of a given request, of a current request, then you're stuck, you have to use context builders. And then you have to adapt the documentation elsewhere using another way. But if uh, your operation, sorry, if your groups are depending uh, on the resource type, on the operation type, but not on the detail of an actual request, then you should, and I, uh, recommend to use resource metadata collection factories instead. Okay, I'm running out of time, but I will sum it up um, quite quickly. We've seen a lot of stuff. Sorry for your headache, but well, it's, it's great. Uh, why not? So we've seen a lot of way to configure serialization context and basically groups uh, happening at different times and having access to different data. I will just put it in a nutshell quite quickly. Okay, so uh, we can act during the context creation here using context builders if I want to, 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 yeah, depending on the resource type, the operation type, and the current request instance, but it won't be shown in the documentation. We can act on defaults to, to configure groups depending on operation type, uh, but not resource type, that's the point, and it's documentation friendly. And we can have used uh, the resource metadata code to configure groups, depending on the resource type, operation type, and it is documentation friendly, but it's not by request. Okay, so at this point, we have a context. And we now can act using, uh, yeah, during serialization uh, to update context or data uh, by the context we have just created and by the resource instance. The, this is the only way place where we can yeah, have a look at the resource instance and adapt serialization uh, depending on that. Okay, so many, many solutions could scare you, but I promise uh, while using it, using it, it will become more and more obvious and uh, at the end it's, it's okay. And just a quick side note before finishing, uh, here for the sake of the conference, uh, this was only tiny yeah, example with little API resources, only two resources, and so on. So the line and the amount of code we got rid of is really tiny. But please trust me that mm, in a real project, uh, this kind of quick wins uh, can, yeah, uh, they are signif significant. Uh, you should uh, use some something like that. OK, uh, thank you very much. If you have any question, uh, you can uh, yeah, even reach me uh, if, if I have time or not. Mais euh, merci, enfin, thank you. <laughs>